joined until the bottom of the hour by Larry Pratt, the uh, head of Gun Owners of America, uh, the No Compromise Second Amendment group, as Ron Paul has said, that has really forced the NRA, and I've even had one of their big board members uh, on, Ted Nugent, to agree, to become more hardcore uh, to where I can actually say some good things about the NRA today. Thank God for uh, Gun Owners of America and Larry Pratt. Uh, that's the group we need to have six, seven million members like the NRA, uh, not its um, however many members it is. I know it's the second biggest gun group in the country, so thank God for them. We're going to get a big update on a host of issues with him in just a moment. Then at the bottom of the hour, I promise to go to Jason and Ryan and John and George and Bill and everybody else that's holding. We'll go to your calls. Then I'm going to get into the Egypt. I haven't got to that yet. The latest on that, the latest on the IRS scandal, the latest on uh, quantitative easing and what's happening in the bond market, and just a bunch of other news that we're going to be uh, discussing uh, here today. But I wanted to play this for Larry Pratt and everybody else out there watching or listening. Uh, radio listeners can go to Infowars.com, and the title of the video is New Gun Show uh, Exposes Joe Biden as a Fraud. And I'm going to tweet that out on Real Alex Jones uh, while Larry Pratt is talking here in a moment, if you want to find the link that way, follow us there uh, at Twitter. This is just a few minutes from the 15-minute uh, shooting show we did. And what we do is we do shooting shows, we do entertainment reviews, you name it, to get mainstream people into the liberty movement. You know, the YouTube stuff uh, is, is kind of our outreach. PrisonPlanet.tv is for our hardcore supporters. And here's just a short clip I wanted to get Larry's take on first, because this video went viral a few months ago, so we incorporated it in where Biden says, don't get a shotgun. Uh, or I just had a Freudian slip. Until you're not a used guns right, I wouldn't get a 12-gauge shotgun. I don't think it kicks much, but for new people, it does. Get something like an AR-15. They're one of the easiest to use, you know, M4-type uh, 223 platforms. And women, children, men, you name it, it's a great firearm. Well, Biden says, don't get that. He says, get a shotgun, go out and commit a felony, just fire it off your front porch at somebody. So let's go to that clip showing uh, a nine-year-old, first time he shot an AR-15 at about 100 yards, hitting bullseye every time. Here it is. My nephew, my brother's son, Rocker, and uh, he's been dying to, to do some shooting, and uh, we thought it'd be like a little much for him to climb behind the 50 cal, but we had a, a 223, and and uh, we let him, let him loose on that, and uh, he, uh, he had a pretty good shot. Vice President Biden told women not to get a 223 rifle, that it was too much for them to handle. He said instead to get a 12-gauge shotgun. If you want to protect yourself, get a double-barrel shotgun. As you can see here, it's not the best gun for beginners. Put that double barrel shotgun and fire two blasts. Here you see how 223 is perfect for children and women. You don't need an AR-15. You're hitting him, Rocker. It's harder to aim. Have it. It's harder to use. Nine-year-old Rocker was hitting bullseyes from the start with the 223 AR-15. One of the things that... that I was shocked about it. Oh, that's was, good. Uh, that full 15-minute video premiered over the weekend on PrisonPlanet.tv. It's now up on Infowars.com for the full radio audience if you want to go see it. But it shows women where people, as a joke, give them a 12-gauge the first time they shoot it, and they don't know to pull it into their shoulder, uh, so they leave some space and it knocks them over. Imagine telling beginners, go buy a 12-gauge, go fire it out your front door. That's what you do when there's a problem. The exact opposite of what you do. The exact type of gun a beginner wants. I would get something like a, you know, 223 single shot or something for a beginner or a 22. Then after that, graduate on. But I'm going to shut up and go to Larry Pratt. Larry, you know, you've seen that viral video, so we've, we've put it out in context with a child. I think it's important to get this video and continue to show what a fraud Joe Biden is. Larry, what's your take on that? Yes, sir. I can hear you. You hearing me? Yes, sir. You hear me? Oh, good. Okay. We're cooking. Yeah, that is uh, just a fabulous video, and it, it shows just how impervious to new information a liberal ideologue is. Uh, I've talked to people who tried to explain to the vice president, uh, sir, um, it's not exactly the way you were saying that uh, actually, and you know, just like your video showed, if you want to get yourself flat on your back, just 
pick up a shotgun and use it without any instruction whatsoever. And meanwhile, uh, in the one that I saw, uh, a lady with her hearing muffs on is uh, very controlled, uh, firing at a target, boom, 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 boom. No problem whatsoever. Uh, but the vice president knows everything, so how could we tell him? anything. Uh, the guy, uh, I thought, kind of showed us the liberal mind and uh, all that it is in this particular episode where it is so demonstrable. We're not talking about whether Keynesian economics in 20 years is going to ruin the country. Uh, we're talking about what's going to happen in the next 20 seconds. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I've grown up, obviously, born in Texas, been around a lot of what I would just call good old fashioned populist uh, type people, Larry. But libertarians, conservatives, they may be wrong on some issues sometimes, but they'll come over and help you fix your truck or fix your tractor. They'll come over. They know how to fix the air conditioner. They'll come over and help you carry your groceries in, and they want help too. And, 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 and they'll help somebody that's choking, and they'll help somebody on the side of the road, and they'll stand up. So-called liberals, I've noticed, will just sit there and say, call 911, call 911 if somebody's being assaulted or somebody's choking. I've seen it. They're not really liberals. They are domesticated idiots. Consistent with what you're saying, studies of uh, giving patterns of people in different states show that the, the more conservative of the states are the places where more is given to private charity, where people obviously uh, assume that they're responsible for helping their fellow citizen, and they're, they're not leaving it all to the government, whereas, as you say, the 9-11 mentality is, uh, just leave it all to the government. A, a friend of Gun Owners of America uh, has um, been a town hall columnist uh, and my mind has just dropped his name right off the tray. It's okay. Tell uh, the story. He's a professor down in the uh, University of North Carolina, and he started out as a 100% down-the-line liberal. And then a couple that he knew was murdered, uh, I think, in their car alongside a, uh, a roadway. And he would go by that point every day and couldn't help but remember that that's where they died. And, of course, they didn't have a gun, he, and he knew that. Well, he finally got a gun, and for kind of the right reason, you know, protect himself. And once he did that, uh, he was on his way to becoming a conservative. And when I talked to him one time about uh, his book that he had written, uh, he said, you know, you're right. I hadn't thought of it that way. But once I took responsibility for my own protection, the most important thing that is in my life, my life itself, then I began to question why all these other government programs. If I can take care of myself and if I should take care of myself, then what's with all this government welfare stuff and all the control that comes with it? And Biden knows what he's doing consciously. Uh, we may be winning the culture war for liberty in many respects, and Obamacare is in trouble and their open border plan is in trouble. Some really good news we can now announce to people. But the problem is they're winning the slow war of domestication. 101 million Americans, according to the Department yeah. of Labor uh, and Statistics, are now getting food aid from the government, more people than are in the private workforce. That's right. Uh, Mike Adams, by the way, is the professor I was trying to uh, come up with a name for. And one of the things that we want to do uh, here at Gun Owners of America more consistently, we have access to some rural acreage not far from uh, the Gun Owners of America office, and we're going to start taking staffers out. We found that even uh, sometimes conservative Christian men and women are all confused about the second amendment and that's that why i like the appleseed project just like the globalists try to recruit yes. into collectivism we have to recruit into liberty i think that's the ticket and what they're doing in that appleseed project is terrific and i guess uh, you might say we're going to be uh, the capitol hill appleseed project <laughs> and i think it's going to pay some dividends because we've seen it uh, uh, professor adams was a a, a very a uh, conspicuous case of when somebody finally learns that guns, uh, there's a right end and a wrong end of a gun, and when you know how to handle the right end of the gun, it's not such a big deal. Uh, obviously, you use common sense. You uh, demystify it. Now, now, expanding here in the time we've got with you, shifting gears, what's going on with the U.N. gun treaty? Obama's saying he's going to sign it. 
even if the Senate doesn't ratify it and even mainstream media goes, can he do that? Is that dictatorial? Well, that's like asking, you know, does a fish swim in the ocean? Of course it's dictatorial. Well, he can sign it. That's what would have to be done before he can refer it to the Senate. But that's where even Democrat senators are going to look at that puppy and say, that doesn't hunt here. Uh, they, they're, they, the U.N. is not popular. Gun control is not popular. That's unpopularity squared. No, but I know, but he's had uh, his chief brainwasher, in his own words, mm -hmm. the attorney general, mm -hmm. has said that we're going to try to do this even if they don't ratify it, is my point. That's where I think we need to be very alert. What we've seen happen, even under the Clinton administration, was a New Age gold mine in Wyoming outside of uh, the National Park there. Uh, and when they applied to uh, start mining activity, they went through something like $3 million worth of permits and inspections, and they were just about on the verge of mining again, uh, like three miles from old Yellowstone Park. And the Clinton bureaucrats went running up to the UN and had the UN declare the, the, the park. World uh, Heritage. Park. Yeah, World Heritage Park, and no mining within 100 miles. Took care of that mine, and I can see something similar being done uh, with uh, either this administration or, God forbid, a future Obama-type administration, uh, somehow legislating through the U.N., saying, oh, we got to comply with uh, the, the world uh, law because uh, we are good world uh, citizens. Well, uh, that's the real danger, and I think if... Sure. The president does sign it. If we ever do get an, uh, an American as president again, we ought to have him unsign it and send it back where it came from. Sure. Well, it's like the carbon taxes. Congress voted that down almost four years ago, and Obama just used a regulation on microwaves to add a line in there about increasing the cost of carbon. And now he says he's going to do other uh, executive actions. He can't do that. He, he, no. he can't implement parts of Obamacare uh, executively. It's unconstitutional. What's going on with Congress when this guy is such a lame duck, has mm -hmm. no political power, uh, the, you know, the last vestiges of capital he had politically are draining out of him. I mean, isn't it time to really go after him politically? Or, or will Congress just sit there and let him run over him? So far, the latter seems to be the case. Uh, John Boehner, the speaker, uh, has it well within his uh, ability and power to tell the president, we're just not going to send you any money for enforcing unconstitutional gun control, for uh, implementing a U.N. treaty, or even signing a U.N. treaty. Uh, we're not going to do any of that. Uh, and yet, um, they just sit around and say, well, what can we do? We can't. See, they, they will tell us if we tell them, we want you to stop Obamacare. We want you to cut the funding and just kill it, D-O-A. And they will say, well, but then the president would allow the government to be shut down well, because there wouldn't be a, a budget or there wouldn't even be a continuing resolution. Well, you know, if nothing happens to increase spending uh, to pay for the current uh, excessive spending, the taxes that come in on a monthly basis would run 57% of the federal government, which is still way too much. It would pay for all the Social Security and Medicare payments, so all of those that are depending on those federal funds would still be getting those federal funds. But what it might mean is that some of the bureaucrats inside the Beltway uh, would be furloughed without pay. Well, that's the larger problem. And, and, and they're there lobbying to keep this going, but we're already bankrupt. We can't let them continue to bankrupt us. They hope through that emergency to then collectivize the country. Uh, and, and I think a lot of the so-called you know, libertarians that are in Congress are scared of the dinosaur media. But you notice that Joe Biden and Obama, when speaking to contributors, these tapes have come out in the last month. I want to get your take on that before getting back into guns specifically and where the future attack on that front's going with the head of Gunners of America, Larry Pratt, joining us on this Monday edition is that they attack Ted Cruz and Rand Paul and say, these guys are dangerous, we've got to shoot them down politically, they're extremists, because they know if real libertarian constitutional conservatism, Americana, ever takes root, which it's starting to do, 
You even see Karl Rove attacking real conservatives and libertarians w with the uh, rhinos. They're desperate in 2014 that if the Campaign for Liberty types get a stronger foothold, we could reverse all this. That's why the whole left, the collectivist, the establishment Republicans are pulling out all the stops because yeah. what Rand Paul and Ted Cruz are doing will defeat these people. Your take on that? I couldn't agree more. Those are two of the n nicest things to have happened to the United States Senate in a long time. And when John McCain, a.k.a. McCluser, accused uh, Senator Cruz of being a wacko bird, Cruz went right back in his face and said, well, if it means being for limited government, uh, uh, adhering to the Constitution, and he ran off a number of things, he said, well, then please call me a wacko bird. Uh, the, his willingness to get into a scrap, not only willing, I think he came here looking for trouble because he, he he's knows. not stupid that's the only way you stand out and make change exactly. they're always saying don't be loud don't be aggressive that's exactly. bull they have bullied us long enough one of my favorites uh, uh, about senator cruz in the short time he's been here on the judiciary committee they were considering the gun control bill that they put out for a vote that happily lost and uh, Diane Feinstein wanted to ban some guns and his question to her was well I wonder if the senior senator from California could tell me that if her view that the Second Amendment only protects certain guns would also then correspond to the First Amendment only protecting certain speech and the Fourth Amendment only protecting certain houses sure she went bananas and she accused him of calling her a sixth grader which i thought would be an insult to sixth graders so i'm sure senator oh he was Cruz so <laughs> polite and calm exactly with exactly with the logic that's why that witch got so upset shifting gears again i know you've seen a story about atf arming robbers in hatch plots that they create themselves similar to fast and furious this came out in local abc news channels and a few others, but hasn't gotten any attention. Uh, what's going on with Fast and Furious and other ATF scandals? And then what is their newest plan to go after our guns? Well, two more uh, Mexicans have been murdered uh, by thugs using a Fast and Furious gun. Uh, in this case, it was a, I believe it was a police chief of a Mexican town, and his, or a mayor and his bodyguard, and um, wife uh, of the guy was wounded. Uh, and it just goes on and on, and nothing is going to be done because we don't really expect Eric Holder to prosecute Eric Holder. What is concerning me is that the House of Representatives in a vote for criminal contempt, sent that vote, that approval of that resolution, over to the federal court for the District of Columbia, and essentially became the prosecutor against the underlings of Eric Holder that, and Eric Holder that had been caught in outright lies under oath and said, we want these people prosecuted. The court, I understood before the election they weren't going to do anything. But now it's been over six months and they still haven't done anything. Clearly, the Washington establishment is not going to do anything to anybody that even gets involved in complicity to commit murder, which is what Fast and Furious was from the get-go. The intention was not to track guns. We know from what whistleblowers have told us, the intention was always to make it look like folks like you and me are the bad guys because we own guns. Sure, that came out uh, to CBS's uh, credit. They got the internal memos that was to be blamed on the Second Amendment, a false flag. We've only got three minutes left with Larry Pratt. We'll go to break and come back with your calls. I've been asking a lot of the questions here. What else do you want to tell people about and alert people about uh, that's going on? We've got California saying got to get insurance or background checks to get bullets. You've got right. all this stuff happening. Uh, uh, what else is on the radar? Well, I've got our attorneys uh, studying the proposition. What would happen if a bunch of guys uh, my age or somewhat younger went onto a school ground at lunchtime when probably everybody pretty much is outside and started playing cops and robbers with our fingers and our Pop-Tarts? And uh, I suppose we could get charged with trespassing, uh, but I'd like to know exactly what might be the result of of that because we need to educate children that a gun in a hand of somebody besides a police officer is not a bad thing. Uh, when that kid in West Virginia uh, was uh, put in a whole heap of trouble, uh, Jared Markham, 
for having uh, defend the right, NRA, defend the right, and showed a picture of truly a hunting rifle. It was not even a. And they AR arrested him. They arrested the kid. Uh, it was an, a most amazing ordeal. Uh, happily, we were able to get involved with our foundation, and I think that had some uh, effect on uh, bringing some reason to these people. And having the prosecutor drop the case when he was going ahead with it. Again, we've just got to commend Gunners of America for what you're doing. So what you're saying is get on the offense culturally because they've got the kids in their clutches right now teaching them that, that even the image of a gun's illegal. Even the image. Uh, so I think we have to push back in whatever smart way we can do to make sure that kids see that, yeah, having a gun is just as much fun as you thought it was when you were shooting your buddy with a water pistol yesterday. Uh, it's not a bad thing. In I'll tell fact, you what's it, fun about it is having low crime and sleeping good at night. Yeah, that kind of beats living in Detroit or Chicago, doesn't it? <laughs> it certainly does. Wow. Larry Pratt, Gun Owners of America, gunowners.org. Everybody should go there, sign up for the free updates, or become a member and tell folks how they do that. Uh, same place, gunowners.org, or you can call 888-886-GUNS. All right, uh, Larry Pratt, thank you for the time. I know you're a busy man. We'll continue to watch your site for any updates, and tell the rest of your crew Godspeed. Great to be with you. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News. And over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show.